Welcome to Talking Beards, an entertainment news podcast all about the facial hair lifestyle and the people who use their beards and mustaches to help change the world. Join your hosts, World Goatee Champion Aaron D. Johnston and two-time National Goatee Champion Scott Sakura as they talk about all the important issues in the community from charity events, competition news, styling tips, breaking news, and much more. Tune in every Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern as we stream live on all social media platforms as well as TalkingBeards.com and answer all of your questions. Join in our chat room and be a part of the show each week as we give away great prizes, compliments of Honest Amish. I am your host, Aaron D. Johnston, and I am Scott Sakura, and we are Talking Beards. Oh, hey, what's going on, everybody in Talking Beards world? This is episode number 190 of Talking Beards. This is episode number 268 of the podcast. I am uh, Aaron D. Johnston. I'm over here, and you know, Scott, I thought you were you were on a roll, you know. So I just was just gonna let you keep going. I thought maybe we could just do the entire episode that way. Uh, we probably could have, you know, mm-hmm. just it's me celebrating having power this week. Oh my gosh, you have power, and you're not sick, and I'm not. Yeah, last week was a rough week. <sighs> you know, what's up, Murphy? What's up, everybody? Hell so, yeah, here. Right? here. As Scott said earlier, we we have MJ Johnson on the show. He is going to be talking all about the National Beard and Mustache Championships coming up uh, in a couple weeks. It's it's right around the corner, as the kids say. Uh, but yeah, how are you doing? Are you are you feeling more better now overall? Yeah. Well, yeah. My, my I mean, as uh, from last week's show, like I was starting to feel better that night when we broadcast and. Woke up the next morning with a sore throat, and then it was downhill the rest of the week. I ended up uh, getting a pretty, well, still I'm getting the rest of it out of me, but pretty much a bad head cold. And uh, so today's been like the first day that I actually feel decent. And oh my God, that shirt though. Which one? Mine or yours? I think he's probably talking about my shirt. I mean, well, your shirt looks super good too. That, yeah. That's almost the shirt I wore today, except for I have this one, and we're going to talk more about this shirt here coming up shortly. I mean, that is a super fancy shirt, but uh, yeah. Before we get into talking about Aaron's shirt and me being sick, which is that's all done and over. Uh, you got the boogers out of your nose. You're good now. Yeah, they're out, gone. Get out of here, boogers. Get out of here. But uh, yeah, everyone, welcome to uh, Talking Beards. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in tonight, uh, everyone that's in the chat room. Uh, you guys can be watching us uh, live on Facebook, uh, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. Uh, just look for Talking Beards. Um, if you want to watch YouTube without, or sorry, if you want to watch the show live without the chat room and just kind of sit back and watch it, uh, you can go to TalkingBeards.com. There you can check out some other stuff that we have on the website. You can order some merch if you want, whatever you want. Doesn't matter. We just are very happy that you're here tonight. And uh, just, uh, yeah. So, Aaron, what's been going on? Oh, my gosh. Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what's been going on. Uh, we see. I, I had power last week, and then yeah. the show ended, and then I left. And then, I don't know. Where did I go? Oh, we went to uh, Monsters Ball. Dang it. I should have. Hold on. Uh, do this thing. Oh, all right. So yeah, well, there we go. Is we're going to talk about this real quick because we have a couple things that all tie into this. But uh, yeah, so if you guys are uh, looking, I mean, you guys know the show. Uh, if you're looking for some really great new product to try out, Honest Amish is what we want you to try. So make sure you go and uh, use the promo code Talking Beards to get 15% off your order. All you got to do is go to honestamish.com, look through all the stuff. I highly recommend the beard bomb and uh, put that in your cart and then type in talking beards. It'll give you 15%. And if you order over $35, you get free shipping uh, domestically. So uh, that's really cool. And as we go into the month of November, we have uh, this really cool little thing going on uh, for uh, No Shave November brought to you by Honest Amish. Um, yeah, so we'll we'll touch base on this one a little bit more. Uh, but 
I think this is the wrong one. Oh my gosh, I posted the wrong one up. There we go. You, it that says one, read carefully, and you put the wrong one up there. What a bum. <laughs> That's why I was like, read carefully. This is the wrong one. Yeah, so like Scott said, we're going to go over all the November competitions coming up shortly, including this one. So this is the online contest that Honest Amish has ran through their Facebook page. I don't know, five, six, seven years. It's It's been going on, but... This is the second year of me kind of running it. And we've got more categories and all that good stuff. So, yeah, stick around. We'll we'll go deeper dive into the all the competitions, including the online contest for Honest Amish. So, yeah. we'll get back to what I was doing. So, okay. Yeah, good morning. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So, we did this last weekend. Look at that. First goatee, you, the very first one ever. First goatee ever. So we went to Monsters Ball this last weekend, and Natalie and I were both talking about not competing and just hanging out. And then you can't go to Monsters Ball with those skateboards sitting there and just not compete. So lo and behold, we competed. We both won our categories, and I got an honest Amish uh, Mad Viking deck. That was that just made me laugh All having right. a Mad Viking skateboard with an honest Amish logo on it. It just made me laugh. So that is, that is funny. But here's the big question: How many decks do you guys have now? Total. total oh i have no idea um we got three now four five six if 15 jeez i don't know you guys Somewhere can start your own skateboard sh- like shop that's, what, that's what we're working on yeah we're gonna we're just gonna use these mad viking decks and just build our own skate park with magic decks so uh yeah that's what we're gonna do well getting getting back to honest amish and your shirt there Let's let's talk a little bit about the shirt, and we're doing a giveaway tonight, so we want to get that rolling at the beginning of the show because we got a lot of people in here right now, I'm and we want to make sure news. breaking breaking news, yeah, a little bit. So yeah, so this is this is the sweet new shirt that I have. Um, we have multiple colors, and these are going to be the shirts that are going to be available at national. So does everybody want to see what options we have? Let's let's do that. Carry bow and arrow. What's up, buddy? All right, let's do this. Look at these things. All right, so first off, this is the shirt that you could potentially win tonight. So this is the the one I'm wearing. It's tan. It looks blue, but it's, it's tan. So this is the front. That's nice shirt there, Aaron D. Johnston. Are you ready for the back? Nope. Okay, now I am. That's a bucking. Is that you on that horse? It is. Holy it's me God. riding a riding a horse. That's wow. Amazing. Yeah, these are these are going to be available at nationals. This is the tan one. Would have been really nice if that cowboy had a goatee on him. Wouldn't it? And <laughs> here's a blue one. Oh my gosh, that shirt blew my mind. <laughs> blue. Wow. I like that. And then these two, they're very limited colors. So, but the the tan and the blue are the ones that we have the most of. This is salmon, salmon, salmon. Yeah, and yeah. Then this is the one that probably looks the best, but we didn't know it was going to look the best when we ordered it. But this is this is the this is the one right here. The mustard shirt. That is the most beautiful shirt ever. I love it. The back looks really good on this yellow. All right. And these shirts are going to be for sale at nationals at the honest Amish table where Aaron's going to be at. So, yeah, well, there'll be a few of us over there, but we'll, I'll be over there and uh, we'll be set up Friday night at uh, the Friday night event. And then we'll be at nationals at the booze and bacon and beards festival and Bam. it's gonna be like a 12 hour thing but so this, yeah. is, this is what we're doing tonight here we this go is your chance to get one of these shirts so we're gonna you guys are gonna be playing the game hashtag nationals everybody knows the drill if you've watched before if not comment wherever you are watching hashtag nationals and you'll be entered to win one of these tan shirts. I'm not going to give away the blue, the yellow, or the the salmon one, but salmon. We have a, an abundance of tan ones, and yeah, so you could potentially win a tan shirt. So, what do you think about that? Um, Beard Laws knows all about Milwaukee drills, so that's pretty good. What's up, Beard Laws? W- what's the fastest Milwaukee drill? 
since you know so much about them. The I one where you run before. out the door when the house is on fire. Mm, that's a good one. What else we got, Scott Sakura? Well, I mean, th- tonight is basically we're going to focus on the national championship, which is coming up. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of bring up here, too, uh, if you guys are interested, if you can see down at the bottom of the screen right there. Everyone go and sign up for the Beard Team USA newsletter. Go to beardteamusa.org slash subscribe. They send out a newsletter every month that kind of gives you a little bit of what's going on in the community. Uh, it gives you basically some information about the bigger competitions that are coming up. Like if you guys have been signed up, you've been getting information about nationals and stuff that have been going on. Um, so make sure you go and do that. I mean, it's it's a really good resource for information. But also, if you go look at the bottom right there, make sure you guys go uh, to the National Beard and Mustache Championships website, National Championship, National Beard Championships dot com. And uh, get your tickets for the 2022 National Beard and Mustache Championships. That's, so good. that's I mean, this is like the big event. I mean, there's a lot of events. And, and as we're going to be talking later in the show, there are a lot of events going on for November again. I mean, we were just crushed by October in the 973,000 events that were going on. And we're like, oh, you know, November is going to be all cool. November will be way better. And then yeah. literally today I added two more November events. So. There's still weeks that people could add these things, but we're yeah. since it's November 1st, we're going to go through all the competitions that we currently have on the beard calendar for the month of November. So let's just get into this interview. You ready for this, Scott Sakura? Okay. All now right. I'm now ready. you're ready. So tonight we have an extremely special guest, probably like his third, fourth, fifth time on the show. Who knows? Maybe 10th. But tonight we have Mr. MJ Johnson on the show. Uh, he will be talking all about the National Beard and Mustache Championships that's coming up in Casper, Wyoming in November uh, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. So we'll just bring him in and oh my goodness, this is just going to be amazing. You ready? Let's go. I got What's up, MJ? Here. Surprise. Oh, did you Peek-a-boo. know it was me? I, I had no idea. I, I saw idea. you. I saw you. I changed shirts talk, so guy. Scott wouldn't know. I I was like, what? Oh, well, because I made the comment. Yeah. I, I'll, I'll, I'll just do a, a real real quick flashback here. But uh, <laughs> as we're checking out all these really awesome new shirts that Honest Amish made for the event. Those are awesome. I made a comment that I'm like, wow, this is really nice that it's not another black T-shirt that you're normally used to getting at a comp. I'm like talking i'm like i have about 50 black t-shirts from different events and mj was wearing a black t-shirt so i that think he I got, got from offended a by me <laughs> so he's like so i'm party in tropical just to make it a little more talking beards ish i mean this this is the most colored shirt assembly ever on talking beards i think i'm pretty sure there we go this is going to be an amazing episode so With tell plus- us yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, uh, just tell everybody, you know, who you are, and and why are you gonna talk about nationals? What what is your role within the national beard mustache championships? Well, I'm coming in live from Hawaii. No, I'm just kidding. Beard lies. <laughs> you busted me. <laughs> coming in live from Minneapolis, where it's a balmy 30 degrees out, so tropical shirts are still in order. My name is MJ Johnson, Razor Hater on Instagram. I uh, won a couple contests, competing worlds quite a bit. Uh, made a couple appearances across uh, the web a little bit. Uh, social media appearances a little bit. But uh, I'm the director of growing operations for the U.S. National Mustache Beard and Mustache Championships. So uh, I got that title going for me as well. So I'm really excited to talk about uh, nationals this year, in particular. Honest Amish helping out again, title sponsor. Big fans of those. I'm actually smelling really good right now because I have my uh, Honest Amish. <laughs> Smells so good. Man, Use this is really bunch. turning into a huge commercial for Honest Amish tonight. <laughs> I mean, why wouldn't it, you? It, it, it should be. <laughs> That's where I am. I'm in the house that Honest Amish built. I don't know. This thing was built in 1800. Did they build it too? It. Yeah, I Dude. guess. <laughs> As I was saying it, I knew it was completely not factual so all right so i want to ask the first question here why casper wyoming what's what's 
so great about Casper, Wyoming, that you guys decided that this is where we want to have the national championship this year? It's a great question. The uh, If you've ever thought back to how many nationals have you been to, Scott? Uh, three? None of them have ever been like with Casper, another Wyoming. event. Oh, you know what I mean? Like, so this time we had the opportunity uh, at the Ford Center. They do like rodeos, all kinds of events, but they're doing their annual booze and bacon fest. So that's going to be going on at the same time as the National Beard and Mustache Championship. So we wanted to do a little bit of a a little bit of experimentation, but it's a really fun one if you like booze or if you like bacon or if you like beards. I don't know. That'll go over all be though. So uh, that was that was a big part of it. A little bit, a little bit, uh, something fun for that. Plus, uh, we get a jumbotron, so we're redoing that into the jump beard tron for the weekend. We haven't really had too much of an opportunity for that before. So, uh, and it's a big, like, uh, expansive open area. So uh, it kind of gave our creative director the basketball arena. Yeah, there's there's no reason we should be on this stage, but we're gonna freaking be on this stage. Oh, we'll be there. We'll be it's, there. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be amazing. It's when the Miami Heat play. <laughs> yeah, when yeah, they do their, their their Wyoming tour. This Shut season. up, Aaron. <laughs> <Where> they play. <laughs> so, so that was that was a couple of the main draws for uh, for Casper. Plus, we had been pretty uh, East Coast and Midwest with the past couple, so you kind of got to branch out a little bit and uh, try to reach some places that uh, don't always have access to like New York city or things like that. So what do you, what do you exactly look for when it comes to f- finding a new venue or a new place? Cause I mean, you're, you're obviously going to places that normally don't have beard competitions in general. Like, like we say, where were we uh, in Scranton, Pennsylvania last year? And right. I mean, there's really nothing in that area that we've ever done before. And then the time before that in outside of Chicago, I mean, these are areas where not a lot of competitions have happened prior to this. So you guys are obviously looking for uncharted territory, but it, what, what is exactly you guys are looking for when it uncharted comes to Uncharted is a good that? descriptor for that a little bit. Uh, we're looking to kind of get to places that would welcome somebody new or that they haven't been exposed to before, but it kind of also has to have something a little bit quirky about it. Uh, it doesn't have to, I said, I have to, it doesn't have to, but that would always play into it. Like the office theme, like Scranton is where they film the office. So that made it gave it a little bit of a fun factor. Plus uh, the people there that we talked to, we talked to the city reps. So that helps us uh, get access to networking and people and the charities and the events. So if we really like the the people that represent the city, that has a lot to do with it as well. Like we, you want to work with people that you like. That's why one of the reasons I'm on this show, you know what I mean? So that's the type of, uh, that, that helps the people helps. The city is the big deal, but the people make a big difference too. For sure. He wants to work with me tonight, Aaron. Not you. That's what I heard. He was like, I, I want to work with a person that I like. And yeah. he was like, I like and, Scott. So and we'll, it was we'll Scott and he had me as soon as he switched shirts. That was it. Yeah, he y'all, y'all both did a costume change. I didn't know that's what we were supposed to do. I, I, fa- I, I missed the memo. And it brushed I, my I tried beard. to get you to send me one of those shirts. I would have worn it. I tried. It. We so StreamYard. If you're watching this this episode, we need to figure out how to we can send. We like, need that shirt thing. Yeah, like like you it's said, not that, email. It's T mail, like T shirt mm-hmm. mail. Team or they just like you said have one of those like bank tube things, and they could just like <laughs> figure it out, and we just. Boom, and then you could have this shirt because yeah, just like the winner tonight, who's going to be using as we see on the bottom hashtag nationals hashtag you, nationals. Yeah, if you guys are new into the into the chat right now, make sure you enter hashtag nationals in there for a chance to win the shirt that Aaron's winning or wearing. Sorry, I'm <laughs> wearing it, and you're going to get the tan one. It's breaking news. Aaron's actually winning the contest. I won it. I won the shirt. It's, a, it's why I'm already wearing it because I won it. No, it's rigged, freaking rigged. So speaking of rigged. I don't know. We got a beer competition this weekend. I don't know. <laughs> that was a horrible transition. <laughs> I know. I didn't know where to go with it. <laughs> so Friday night, completely rigged. Tell us all about that uh, <laughs> the event that we're going to have on Friday night. National. One of the 
one of the fun factors of uh, going to a new place is that uh, mm -hmm. people come out come out of the woodwork and kind of uh, oh the national championships are there, but they see photos online of like Aaron or or Scott and they're like I don't know if I can compete with that. I really like what I got going, but I don't know if I'm ready for like full tilt nationals yet. Friday is kind of an exhibition show. Uh, a much, much smaller number of categories, uh, five to be exact. Okay. And uh, anybody can can do it. Anybody can party. You can just come in and kind of get a, a taste or an amuse-bouche of the National Beard and Mustache Championships. And anybody, and you can only compete in one category Saturday, but you can also compete Friday. That doesn't, and then you can compete twice uh, that's a way for somebody to do that as well. So it's kind of a, a little bonus category. I know a couple people like to do that. They like to take down a Friday event and a Saturday event. So it's kind of like a side quest for some of the, uh, the veterans, but it's also a really easy way, uh, friction free for somebody new to just try it out Friday. So where's this event going to be Friday night? Same, same place, same place at the Ford center. So Friday night's event Friday. is at the Ford center as well. The, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I, I think it's friend? I think it's at a bar downtown somewhere. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Shoot, I don't have it up right now, but it is on the it'll be it'll be the exact one will be announced. Yeah, so we'll we'll post it on all the, the nationals event pages and everything. You'll be able to find it, but it's in Casper, and Casper's yeah. really not that big. So you no. can probably just wander around and just be like, oh, there's a bunch of beards oh, over you there. Can bump and, into it. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. It'll be fine. But it's it's downtown somewhere. But so it's there. You uh, besides just having five categories for Friday night, do you have anything? It's at the Gaslight Social. Boom! Look at this guy. Yeah. Look at this guy. Um, Everybody knows, but me. Do, yeah. Do you have anything else <laughs> scheduled for Friday night besides the beer competition stuff? MJ looks. Yes, there we go. Unchecked Magnum PI. That's what we're talking about. Friday is for the exhibitionists. That's the well. That's the background part of it. But yeah. Sorry, what was the question? I got <laughs> sidetracked by your viewers and dropped like three comments on me. So so Friday night, do you have any other uh, events going on at, at the Gaslight Social besides the beard competition? Just kind of hanging out. I believe I know somebody might be vending there, but I can't remember who that would be. I think I might vend Friday oh, you night. You might? Oh, it might I be might as well. It'd be a good place well. for you guys to pick up those commemorative T-shirts that they just. You uh, know, I might have a couple of these commemorative T-shirts. You, yeah. you know, they're so nice that that you can actually just get them as a souvenir. The even if you're part of the brews and and bacon festival, it, <laughs> it's you can just get it. You know, just buy right. it. But one uh, one super fun thing to think about too is. Uh, the Guinness Book of World Records longest beard chain. Is that Friday night? There might be something going down Friday night. Yeah, for sure. Friday night. So uh, there's a lot of fun things. I like to say there's a lot of ways to win at a beard contest. Seriously. What if you got into the Guinness World Records with your friends, with your beard friends? I mean, that's amazing. Is that not epic? I think yeah. that's pretty much going to be my goal in life is to be part of this daisy chain thing. Like when we got everybody in uh, in the book, in the print edition of the book for the, the online 2020 nationals, who saw that coming? Seriously. And then that was you, pretty amazing. If you got the book and then you got to the page and then you saw yourself in there. Seriously. Except for cool. like the two rows that got cut off and I was in one of those two rows. I think I was too. Yeah. You and I were yeah. both. Yeah. I've gotten a, uh, a number of uh, DMs <laughs> on Instagram. Uh from a couple of those people <laughs> it happens it was but still yeah. super cool like it, we, we, we tried the we had like community a, was still represented very there was strong. dozens and dozens of it us was in awesome there. man like yeah. you if you weren't in it at least you knew a bunch of people that were so yeah. that's, that's equally as cool i think <clears throat> Oof. Ooh, that is this that is absolutely true is that is that happening friday night are we uh, finally Guinness is going to honor the world news. Here? You nailed it. There it is. That's what it is. It's going to ban it from all number one worst. Look at that, MJ. You're going to get to be in Guinness again, dude. It's <laughs> over. It's so many times now. Oh my gosh! So Friday night we got Guinness. We've got some uh, competitions going on. Are there any new additions to the website that we were talking about earlier? The was it the Ooh. National Beard Championships dot com? Is that it? 
Yeah, nationalbeardchampionships.com. And look at the uh, very uh, astute of you, Aaron. Uh, back in the day, let me preface this first, though. Back in the day, uh, anybody who watched Whisker Wars and saw that type of thing, the old Beard Team USA uh, first original website used to have a, a little flowing stream of about six competition photos. And it was mostly of like uh, from worlds and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I saw that and I had a goal of, of mine personally before I'd won like anything. I'd be like, wow, that'd be super fun to just be featured. You want to be on that website. I wanted to be on that. It was kind of like making the Hall of Fame a little bit. It's not that cool, but it, it was along those lines. But anyways, I finally convinced them to put one of my uh, photos up there. And so did Jackie Ellison, one of my best uh, bearding buddies that there's ever been. We both got on there. And we like had a beer and we cheers and we thought it was awesome. Uh, one of the things that just got added to the nationalbeardchampionships.com under the uh, competitor gallery, we added one, two, three, four years worth of uh, portraits to the site. So you are, if you competed in 2021, 2019, 2016, or 2015, you are archived. If you got a Greg Anderson portrait, archived permanently on the nationalbeardchampionships.com. That's so awesome. Anybody that sits for a portrait for Greg Anderson uh, at this year's comp, you will be archived in perpetuity for all those to see, displaying your favorite beard style that you come up with that day. A little hmm. piece of history for yourself. Yeah, and and once again, Greg Anderson oh. will be at this. Look at that guy. That guy um, looks good. Greg Anderson will be my my all time favorite photographer. Like he's just an awesome dude, number one. But he is like a fantastic photographer, like one of the best around. And hey. he focuses heavily on beards and mustaches, and has been at a lot of these competitions. And he will be at this event taking pictures of. Yep. Once again, oh, okay, ugh. oh my god, oh, wow, that's rude. So fast forwarded. Wow, it's like, oh, it's <laughs> got on there. Let's hey. take 45 minutes. Oh, no, it's fine, we don't need it on there. Yeah, but yeah, Greg is going to be there taking pictures. Greg's going to be there, yep. This is and the other, I mean, so for sure, you'll get uh, uh, one of the things, uh, one of my favorite quotes. I got interviewed by the local paper back in like 2011 or whatever when I won the Minnesota State Mustache Championship. And I started the uh, Minneapolis Beard and Mustache Club. They said, why did you do that? And I said, and I brought uh, my friend who is a portrait photographer as well to the, my very first event. We took photos right away. And I said, it's because I wanted to archive modern man handsome. So like what everybody currently looks like, then you get to see what a modern style was for that moment in time. Like it's fun to look at like old photos from the 1910s or 1930s or 50s just to see everybody's hairstyle or beard style while they were partying. So if it's not archived, you kind of lose a little bit of that. So we wanted to make sure we uh, captured everybody and then had a place for to be permanently on display. So And then in a hundred years when they're still doing beard competitions, they can go back these, and look at us. These will be the original OG superstar mega ultra book writers absolutely there are going to be so many books written about you yes all of them <laughs> so saturday is is the the big the big show what time uh what time's this thing going to kick off on saturday uh noonish so noonish. We're, gonna be, we're partying early we got uh we got to load in there's a lot of work that goes into it uh <laughs> nationals has really good team as you know you've sat in mm -hmm. on the zoom meetings and it's uh a lot that goes into it, man. So, but we got uh, crank and squad. We're going to load up a uh, judges meeting at 11. Uh, we're going to get it going. It's going to be great. I saw there's somebody who's asking if there was going to be a parade. Yeah, I just saw that. Eh, we don't have that plan, but that's not a no. It's not, not a no. We no. could just, we, we can always no. just parade. We don't have to have it scheduled. We can just conga line right through the, the, I want to just, I keep wanting to say bacon and bruise, but it's, Booze, booze and bacon <sighs> yeah well, so we can just jungle on through that event well I, and that would be a perfect way to advertise the event i mean definitely all the people that are there are going to see all these bearded guys and girls coming through that'll definitely <laughs> get some attention and, and 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 that's part of the thing is crossing these two events together yeah getting these other people who've never experienced an event like this to stick around and really get involved and hopefully 
maybe suck a few of them in, you know, even if not, even if not into this event, but a future one down the road, you know, plus uh, the potential to blow somebody's mind. If they've never seen a beard contest before, uh, we went out of our way to match uh, when the booze and bacon fest is going on to displaying some of the craft be craft beard categories. <laughs> so just to make sure they get a little extra limelight when there's like a, an extra ton of people there for from, from from a fan's perspective. So from what about noonish to three-ish, there'll there'll be a pretty good overlap of the all. There's going to be an right? overlap. Don't quote me on when what category is going because I don't have that's not my area of expertise. Right, but, that, so. but that three hour ish block will be we're trying be to get extra the, eyeballs on those categories. So that's that's going to be really cool and it'll be good it exposure is. for the entire beer community that you know all these new people are going to see what you know is going to be a spectacle. I mean the if if we go with the craft categories or the freestyle categories or something like that at the beginning, dude. Like you said, their their minds are just going to be blown. People aren't going to know. Never what if you thought you were just going to go rip bacon and booze, and then all of a sudden, uh, freestyle and craft beards comes up in your grill, <laughs> there's going to be some smiles. The parade's a good idea. If you're not competing, well, there might be a there might be a parade going on. Maybe, maybe. Wow, look at that talking beards chat room actually. Uh... Conga line. There we go. Conga line Seriously, of beard. Look at look where the imagination goes when it's beards, booze, and bacon. We're over here to parade. Conga line. I mean, this is going to be good. Thank you, Ricardo. Magnets. That was very nice of you to suggest that. Good vocabulary is going on. The talking beards fan base is very well educated. Yeah. They are tonight. They just because all these extra people <laughs> showed up because they MJ's in tonight. the house. So they're like, we, we, they all got their encyclopedias out and the thesauruses and all that good stuff, trying to look all professional. Yeah, I appreciate it. You're making us look good tonight, guys. Thanks. We, we appreciate it. They're Brian, doing a great Alex job locally. The, yeah, doing a great job locally promoting it. So uh, let's get let's get more into the event right now. Let's talk a bit. Uh, what, what about some judges? Judges? Well, we know a thing or two about that. I'm a resident judge, which is interesting for me. I uh, went to competing a lot, but uh, so this will be uh, one, two, three. This will be my third in a row sitting behind the judges table. But uh, if anybody knows who uh, Toot Joslin is, he's actually one of the original uh, beard people that inspired me to even start back in 2009. Uh, Google image search Toot Joslin sideburns. And you're going to see what a world champion looks like. He's a two-time world champion, often going up against the very best. When there was a smaller amount of categories, you'd go against the very best Europe had to offer. Boom. Dropping golds on him. Uh, amazing. John Buckler. <clears throat> anybody have heard of him? Have you ever seen Whisker Wars? That's amazing. Aaron, man. I know happen. you're a fan of Whisker Wars. I mean, we've talked about this probably mm -hmm. 20 times at contests. But John Buckler is really interesting because uh, – the amount of people that have told me personally that he inspired them to do freestyle. I mean, you're talking about like a who's who Isaiah Webb, Incredibeard. John is one of his like very, very first uh, inspirations. I mean, Jason I mean, he was Kiley, a lot of people's. Yeah. He was a lot of people's. Chad inspiration. Roberts. He was, I mean, he was an OG like, freestyle person for sure. Oh, totally. I mean, these guys, I mean, Incredibeard, Jason Kiley, Chad Roberts. I mean, these are like the best of the best. And they're like saying this guy was the was a killer. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So his pot he, he he hasn't been at a contest for a really long time. He'll be popping in. He's not freestyling, but uh he's he's actually like an incredible human being. Like if he was just dead no beard, you would love to talk to him because he's super cool. Does but he yeah. does he have facial hair still or is he shaved? Or? Ooh, uh, I'm going to leave that uh, okay. as a mystery box. Yeah, when you get there, you're going to find out. We'll find out. Yeah. And we Wait, have, who uh, we got? Yeah, we have uh, <clears throat> Sarita and Emily, who are uh, art professors uh, at Wyoming Universities. Okay. So uh, they've, uh, they've seen a lot. They know how to put uh, what they see into descriptors. I mean, it's a really fun aspect of it. Uh, 
we we don't I don't know what all categories they're going to be in, but when they do, it's going to be a huge benefit. There you um, go, Chad uh, Roberts. Look at that. Buckler yeah, I, is awesome. Buckler have, is uh, awesome. Ricardo yeah. wants to know about. A, sorry, I just bring this up real quick. He wants to type a link. What link are you talking about, Ricardo? And we'll get it up for you. The link for something. Nationalbeardchampionships.com, I assume. If it is, it's oh, at, yeah. at the bottom. Going across the bottom right now. <laughs> Nationalbeardchampionships.com, for sure. And then uh, there, uh, when you grow your beard, you're kind of building it. Uh, we have uh, the national bodybuilding champion, Daniel Ziegler. He won the uh, Mr. Natural Olympia. This is actually his second time judging. He was a judge at the 2020 online nationals. Okay. So he'll be, this would be his first time judging in person, but he's actually pretty experienced now. So just having somebody, uh, we like having uh, national champions of other sports or other categories in the mix. And he's actually going to do his, it's Dan's beard on Instagram, D A N Z B E A R D. He's going to do uh, like a, a whole thing coming up with him traveling to the contest. Uh, it'll be like a whole like Instagram social thing. It's going to be pretty cool. So yeah, we have uh, um, the county commissioner, <laughs> Jim Milne, who has got really, Oh, there he is. So, there uh, he is. Look at that stash. Look at that look cowboy at that hat. I mean, that's just a hat in Wyoming. That's just a regular hat in Wyoming. I think yeah. you have to, you have to wear one of those to get into the state. I believe mm -hmm. right off the airport, you have to have one of those on. Otherwise you don't get in. We have ours in the trunk of the car. We're ready to That's cross good. that Wyoming That's border. Good. Oh, the name of, uh, oh, Toot Joslin, T-O-O-T -O -O -T space, J-O-S-L-I-N, Toot Joslin. Wait till you get a load of these sideburns. Um, he actually invented this style. I used to do this style as well, uh, 100%, 100% inspired by him. Uh, when you see it at first, you don't really know what all goes into it. But like, how does he do it? But the 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 trick is he actually ties his sideburns in a knot behind his head and then styles it from there. So if you look at these photos with that in mind, he grew out his sideburns long enough to tie them behind the back of his head and then styles it. So hmm. it's <laughs> that's it's pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. That's pretty awesome. I like that. <laughs> I like this. I hope he doesn't leave like the mayor of Nolanville did. Yeah, so Scott and I were emceeing a beer competition in Nolanville probably about a month ago, and literally the mayor of the town was one of the judges. Mid-category, he just got up and left. Why? He had to go. I don't know. It was an emergency <laughs> he, he, or something. He, did, I don't know. he didn't say anything to anybody. He was just was like, He's like, hey, I'm out. He, Bye. Uh, yep. <laughs> we're just looking around. We're like, wait a minute. We're missing a judge. And someone's like, there he is right there. He's leaving. That's the <laughs> and so exit. me and Scott just talked trash to him as he was walking out the door oh, we're like, hey, there must be a cat in the tree yeah we both were <laughs> straight up <laughs> <laughs> we're like vote for mayor ryan or whatever the heck his name was <laughs> like he sticks around for beer competitions real good see ya <laughs> funny <laughs> he's bounced but yeah let's hope that doesn't happen at nationals yeah well we have some backups i'll have to uh if somebody bails i'm uh i'm calling taylor up i think so there you go taylor will Come from the bullpen. We have a couple bullpen people, so okay. But they're bullpen people. They don't really matter. the The main people that matter <laughs> are, you know, the people that have already been announced and talked about. Right. So, uh, okay. but there's one person, yeah. one of the most important people that has not been spoken about yet. Mm. So, are this, we, who's going to MC this event? This okay. made me so, 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 so happy when you told me. Like, oh, no one knows yet, Scott. He hasn't oh, that's right. I mean, I don't, this I'm is breaking wonder. news right now. Yeah. Who, uh, who's going to be your MC? This is like, so, yeah, pretty, pretty stoked on this one for me. Uh, the MC for this year's National Beard and Mustache Championships is da 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 da. Adam Paul Cosgrove of American Mustache Institute. That's awesome. awesome. He's uh, I told I told Aaron the story just a second ago, but I'm gonna tell it again just because I love it to pieces. Uh, he's uh, Adam's one of my favorite people. I think he's the English professor. Uh, I was telling somebody else that he's like the the best guy you could possibly get for an MC of a beard contest. I go best information, best charisma, best vocabulary. 
Adam, tell him about it. What do you think of your vocabulary? And he turns back to the guy and goes, it's good. And that's how I just <laughs> left it dry like that. Just left me hanging dead after I just talked his vocabulary up like crazy. But I mean, that's just how he is. He's got a million awesome descriptors for just about everything. It's funny. It's intelligent. He cares about the uh, facial hair community. I mean, everybody likes American Mustache Institute. It's one of my favorite things in all of uh, all of beard contests, beard lore, modern man handsome, anything. But I love American Mustache Institute. I right. want to I, I want to say one specific thing about Adam. Like, it, honest to God, if it were not for Adam, this show would not have existed. I would have never like he. I, I still remember this one time him and I were. Well, I won't hold that against him. You can, but it was this one, it was this one night him and I were walking the streets of Pittsburgh and I started explaining to him the whole idea of what I wanted to do, starting the beard caster. And he's like, dude, this is such a great idea. You got to do it. And I'm like, Hey, do you want to do it with me? He's like, I'm just too busy. He's like, it's a great idea. You really need to do it. And he really pushed me into starting the whole podcast and, and it developing into what it is now. So, I mean, you have him to thank for a lot of this too. So I'm like a generic backup. Adam Cosgrove. He pretty much. <laughs> I'll take yeah. it. I mean, he's highly interested in in leveling other people up. I mean, yeah, it's it's awesome. Plus, just, the, the sense of humor is just ridiculous. Did you guys ever hear about when they sent the guy down to training camp in Florida? No. <laughs> you know who Don Mattingly is, the baseball mm-hmm. player. He has like, yeah. he has a sweet mustache. He was the first baseman for the Yankees. Had had a had a sweet mustache <laughs> for twenty years, but he went down to. Uh, tampa or whatever but they for some reason have like a no facial hair rule for their players and managers so he had to sh- sh- shave his mustache so american mustache <laughs> institute sent down a reporter so and the the, the video is awesome so it's there's like six reporters all grill and maddingly all pitching all pitching uh your shortstop but then it's time for the american mustache institute guy to ask him a question and he seriously asked don maddingly hey how could you turn your back on your people? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? Manningly goes, my people. <laughs> it was awesome. Then he, then he just skated around it after that and just started moving like a fish, but it was awesome. That's, that's, that's the type of stuff that those guys got away with. Uh, Brian Nelson says the most important thing. Sup. 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 That's all you got Speaking of someone with uh, like the, the best vocabulary, Full of like really this- like hard hitting stuff that you you really want to have long conversations with Brian T Nelson. It's right good. Here. Sup. It's good. It's good. <laughs> uh, we have uh, one thing that got put in here. He said, "Is there a tentative schedule for Saturday?" I've made an appointment to see a local barber before competition. So noonish. You said that, that's that's. It's kicking off. Yeah. So that's 1130. I mean, I think it's like the exact start time, but yeah. So if you're going to a barber, maybe probably get him before that. There will be barbers on site as well. There you go. So uh, tell us about the barbers that are going to be on site for Saturday. I don't know that exact one. There, the there's a few, that. or there's going to be like rotating barbers, right? Like, isn't it a yeah. whole barber shops bringing a booth and like, Shoot, I don't have that info on me right this second. It's all good, but there will be barbers on site. You could just make it up. It'll be fine. Yeah, we'll just make up the names. <laughs> <laughs> but there will be barbers there. So that is that is the most important thing. So if, if you are planning on a, a barber shop appointment, maybe you don't have to. You could just get to the competition early and hang out and, you know, have one of the local barbers that are there cut your beard and it, which is actually kind of helpful sometimes for prejudging. Yeah. Like for yeah. length or if you, uh, if your mustache went, if you went too far off the thing or if your beard is a centimeter too far. There you go. So if you're like, I'm trying to be in the 12 inch category and you show up 12.1 inches. Then yeah. And that, and that brings up a completely good valid point. And, and this was something we kind of touched upon earlier too. Like, knowing what category you fit into like Mm. that to me is like when I first started and for anyone, I mean, we have a ton of new people in the chat room tonight that we Mm. normally don't see. And obviously people that are going to be attending the event. And, you know, if you're new in the whole scene of beard competitions, 
knowing what competition or knowing what category you fit into. And that was like one of my big things when I first started in my first competition, like I walked in there and I'm like, uh, I, I don't know what category I go into. And coming into an event like this, that has how many categories are in this one? 52. Yeah. Somewhere in there. For now, if there yeah. if there's like nobody in one, that there's fifty ish categories. There's fifty ish categories. Yeah, that's a really good point, Scott. Like yeah. I, I like when you first go, you're like, what what category do I qualify? If I don't qualify, do I not get in anymore? So those are uh, those are some of the challenges if you've never been to any beard contest or if you've never been to the national championships before. So, but it's actually part of the fun too. So like when you look back on it. Uh, that some of those like hurdles and jumps are part of what make uh, the the memory fun or the journey fun. And it can start you off on like the rest of your super fun beard journey for the rest of your life, just by diving in, pick one, go for it. And then uh, either you nailed it, or maybe you find something out really interesting about it at prejudging. You're like, Oh, this little nuance and stuff like that. So speaking of barbers at national hey. events, uh, this is uh, one of the barbers from, <laughs> from Scranton last year. What's up guys? Zinger. Yeah. Y'all should travel to Casper this two weeks from now. You hurry yeah, up. Just, just put the chair in the, in the truck yeah. and or in the back. Let's go. Yeah. You, you can come cut at my booth. Hang out. Um, yeah. So if you go to, uh, national beard championships.com, uh, mm. there is at the top, there is a, a thing for categories. So you can go in and, uh, kind of get a basic at your, here's all your different main type of, I mean, literally there's four different main type of mustaches and beards. And if you click under, it breaks down each one and basically gives you a little bit of information about each one. Now, the nice thing about going to an event like the nationals is you get an idea by going to this website and kind of finding where you think you fall. But when you get to the event, they have a group of people there that are there to help. Number one, uh, help you really get into the right category you need to be in. And to help you make any type of adjustments that you need to do to fit into your category or fit into a different category that you may not have thought you belonged in. Totally. Yeah, definitely check out this. Uh, what you're scrolling on right now is a really good tool. Uh, yeah, the categories, mustache, partial beard, full beards and craft, but then you click on it and all the classes come up yeah. or the subcategories or classes. And then you can kind of, uh, get into it a little bit. Yeah. It's just, as you open each one, it just like, it's huger and just more and more information. But yeah, uh, it, I mean, it gets, it, it's super overwhelming for sure. I mean, that's the way I felt when I went into my first one, I'm like, uh, I have no idea. And as you get there and you meet the people, they just kind of, they relax you and make you feel comfortable and, you know, That's especially point, with yeah. nationals and having the group, the groups of people that like, for instance, Natalie, she's there measuring people, making sure they fit into their category, answering any kind of question you possibly have. I mean, there's tons of educated people there and that, that the nationals have on hand to help you make the right decisions, help you change and adjust whatever you need. Um, how did, what what where did that all come about like was that just because of the need of the people that you guys this started doing that or was it to just make sure that each one's in the right category having well, those the, people the pre, uh, well prejudging is crazy yeah. important uh for a couple reasons you 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 touched on the one of making helping somebody new get into the right category but also setting the fair playing field uh, when you go to Europe in like the world championships, prejudging is intense. Like these guys are like, they're up on you. Like they, they're, they're following their buddy. They're making sure that uh, nobody cheats or tries to, or if there is, you're canceled. You got to go fix it. So setting the fair playing field is a super huge advantage for the competitors, for the contest, but also for the judges. It shouldn't have to be the judge's job when somebody walks up or a competitor walks up on stage for the judge to figure out if they qualify for that category. 
They only get to see them for a split second. And they got to do the quality. They got to do the fantastic. They got to do the shape, the color, all of that. So when you have people like Natalie <laughs> or like Wolfgang uh, is one of my, is the top prejudge at Worlds. He's the, he incredible. He knows every category. He's the nicest person. And it's super duper important. So if you know you bumped into like Natalie or whoever's working and they pass you through, the judges can be confident that person belongs in that category. The competitor is confident that they have a fair playing field. You know what I mean? So it's um, it's where the rubber hits the road a little bit. They got to be awesome for competitors. They got to be awesome for competitors to make sure it's a fair playing field. And they're helping out the judges as well, which helps the whole contest. So, yeah. It definitely helps make important. make everything kind of run a lot smoother, too, because then you way don't have smoother. way smoother. Because you get to these smaller competitions that don't do any prejudging. You got some dudes like, oh, I showed up late. And then his beard is completely not even in the right category. Then yeah. it just throws a, a wrench in the whole night. And that's just one thing that you really try to avoid at a bigger event like a Nationals or a Worlds. You just want everyone to be ready to go and be scheduled. And, and that's part of prejudging. Yeah. So uh, just to throw this in, too, is uh, now in the past, we've done prejudging on Fridays the day before, or you can get prejudged the morning of. Now, is that the same with this one? Are you guys doing prejudging the day before, or is it all Doors open at 12, come and get prejudged. I mean, how is this all working? Well, that it can depend on the category too. Like a freestyle, you know, you can, you want to be it. Well, we're announced like the exact uh, rules on that one, a little bit closer to it, but uh, mostly day of we prefer, but uh, mm -hmm. there will be some ways to get prejudged. And there's going to be a, like, and, and it's not like there's like two people there prejudging. There's a table it's with a probably. Team. 15 20 people there so you're it's nothing that's gonna like slow you up and in getting into the event you know it's no, just it's gotta, part of it yeah, yeah exactly like you said it's just part of it and i've seen the the best of the best get sent out of prejudging so like if you need to do a little a little uh take something down or you're, you're not quite qualified it's not like super bad like i've seen like people that have won world championships before get discoed out of prejudging because they were a little bit too long somewhere. You know what I mean? So it happens to everybody, but it's all about like a fair playing field. And it's, it's a, it's a good thing that it all happens. So, so we got an opportunity to back up real quick. Uh, this is, this is the barber that's going to be the shop for him. Gentlemen, saloon, Sweet. saloon, salon and barbershop. So that's a local barbershop. And uh, it's kind of funny about this shop. When we went up there in, in August, I was just driving around Casper and I saw it and it looked like a really cool barbershop. So I went in and it's like, Hey, we're doing the national beard championships. Here's some honest Amish. And they're like, Oh, we're, we're already coming. We're going to be there. <laughs> hair. I'm like, all right, cool. We'll see. You, <laughs> you already Did you know. Get your haircut? It. No, heck no. Oh, okay. I got a barber. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. Yeah. Spe speaking of honest Amish, don't forget everyone. If there's any new people in the chat room right now, hashtag nationals to enter, to win, uh, one of the shirts that, uh, one of the commemorative uh, 2022 National Beard Mustache Championships presented by Honest Amish. That shirt's just beautiful. Um, you might yeah. be the next meme, Aaron. That's one of those that trick, like where it looks blue or it looks tan. Right. You know is, what I mean? Is it the tan shirt or is it the blue shirt? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. Any, any answer is correct. It, it's right. All the answers are correct. But so, the design uh, is killer, by the way. Dude, he, he did an amazing job on this design. That is. Fast. Those look great. <clears throat> so we're we're about out of time, but one of the main things that we we really focus on at beer competitions is the charity aspect of it. And what charities are you going to be working with this year? Well, we got that's one of the things that's nice about Casper is we like the people, and they had two really cool charities right off the bat. They're like we've been working with these people for a long time. We absolutely love them, so we got drawn into it right away. Uh, Project Kenny is uh, the first one. Uh, what they do is they kind of give uh, uh, veterans uh, a service dog, and but not just any service dog. It's called a Kenny dog. So they train the dogs. They hook the veterans up with the service dog, but then they continue to pay for the food and pay for veterinarian bills. So you, it gets, it's really cool. That's this awesome, guy, man. the veteran, the kind of levels it up. And so, uh, yeah, getting a veteran, a Kenny dog, that's what project Kenny does. And, uh, that's really cool. The other one is, uh, unaccompanied student initiative. 
And uh, what they do is uh, uh, in, a, in a number of ways, they help uh, students 18 to 20 who are currently homeless. Okay. And help them out in, uh, in a multitude of ways. So uh, is this a Casper charity yeah. or is this a national? No, it's local. Yeah. Okay, local, cool. That's local. awesome. Yeah. So a lot of ways to level up some really cool people with the charities uh, that we pick. So. Well, those, those seem like pretty couple solid charities. They're to pretty me. good. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome, man. Man, I don't even know. Well, I, I, we could probably talk about nationals for probably about 13 hours. Right. There's, there's so much to this event. It's going to be a long day. So pack a lunch or just pack come and eat bacon. Or just come eat bacon. There you Why go. Not? The, the Ford Wyoming Center is amazing. I mean, Casper seems really cool. One of the things that we, we touch on, we try to, and uh, not necessarily donuts, Scott, because Scott loves donuts and he always brings up donuts every time, but it's the weather. That's one thing that we've all kind of worried about with Casper. So Friday, it's looking at 40 and 22. Saturday, looking at 41, 21. And Sunday, 40 and 21. But no snow. Nice. There's no snow in the forecast. I think it's it's supposed to snow this weekend. Great. So next weekend, I mean, we we have five days of partly cloudy so there'll probably be some snow on the ground but there's no blizzard so pack a jacket like. maybe some long johns maybe, maybe some you know a baby baby yoda onesie whatever whatever you got to do to get yourself a bucky one or, or or a bucky's onesie whatever you need to stay warm you know probably bring it especially if you're from the south but you know this yeah, is probably like summertime warm. to you you know because you're from Minneapolis and it's already negative 50 there probably. Yeah, I'm not worried about it. Yeah, you're like, I'm I'm ready for this, you know, I going south. I got my shirt Hawaii on shirt on. So basically it's like your your Casper shirt. Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> All right. So if anyone needs any more information about this, just go to nationalbeardchampionships.com. Uh I'll pretty much all the information they're gonna need to know is found there, right, MJ? Absolutely. That's all you got to do at nationalbeardchampionships.com. You can find us at Beard Champs USA on Instagram, National Beard and Mustache Championships on Facebook. There you go. Everywhere. Just Google National Beard Championships and you're going to find information. Yeah, you're going to find it. And uh, any parting words, any, anything that we didn't touch on that you want to bring up or, you know? Uh, it's going to be awesome. That's all I got to say. We might have a couple things, uh, surprises left. Gosh, I can't wait. So November 11th, 12th and 13th, Casper, Wyoming. Be there, be square, as the kids say. MJ, thank you for coming on. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Pleasure was all mine, as usual. Well, you you did a great job. And, oh, dang it, we didn't didn't do it. We were going to bust that out. We forgot. (laughs) You did it. You did it. Oh well, there's a lot going on. We we can't hit all the little picturey things when we want to, but we, we try. Can try. All right, national beer championships coming up, Casper, Wyoming. Thank you, MJ. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, that was so good. So much information in that, and as uh, Dusty Dud writes here, uh, just found our channel a few days ago and was curious why you guys decided to grow big goatees and not full beard. Just curious. Thanks. Me personally, I've always had a goatee for the past 78 years, as far as I remember. I just like the clean, sleek look of it. I like having nice, uh, I don't like the big wideness to it. I like the nice length it gives my face. It's just my per. I just, I've always, it's always been long and I've always liked it that way. I just, that's just what I like. So mine was was a little bit different. I I started doing competitive bearding for a couple of years and my sides just didn't grow very well. And I had several people tell me that, you know, maybe you should go goatee. It might be a little bit more competitive. And then I finally convinced myself that that's what I should do. And I shaved my sides off and I've been competing as a goatee since January 2017. But that's that's how I ended up being a goatee. My sides just didn't grow good enough. So here we are. 
Well, and since we didn't get a chance to dive into the beard calendar this week, we'll definitely get into that next week. Um, we appreciate everyone that tuned in tonight, but we definitely do because today is November 1st and it is no shave November. We definitely do have to touch upon this uh, competition or this online contest that uh, um, is currently going on at Honest Amish. Uh, Aaron, take it away because this is your baby. Yeah, so you can go over to the Honest Amish Facebook Facebook page, or you can just simply just email Aaron at honestindustries.com. So that's ultimately where your, your submission needs to go. And all I need is your name, your address, your category, obviously a picture. And uh, if you'd like to include your hoodie size, that simplifies it so I don't have to ask later. But first place, you get a hoodie and products. Second place, you get a fanny pack and products. Third place, you get a hat and products. And I may have some uh, little additional things I'm going to add in there. And I'm going to announce it in uh, probably a couple weeks. But there is a grand prize for uh, best overall. And we're going to do best overall a little bit different this year. Best so what overalls. we're going to best overalls best o- like kind of like best in show so we'll do first second oh. and third for uh best in show and uh yeah we're gonna do a little contest within a contest and we'll, we'll figure out exactly how we're gonna do it but the, we've got some super good prizes for the essentially the best in show of this competition but yeah super easy send me an email aaron at honest industries with a picture and the included information, name, address, category, and hoodie size. And that's it. It's super easy. It's just for fun. And if you win your category, or if you get first, second, or third, you're, you're going to end up with a bunch of cool Honest Amish stuff. So there you go. There's there's no better products that you can possibly yeah. win than that. And, and as we see, uh, Wife Brewer, who this is going to be his first competition, and he's grateful there will be prejudging. So just as we talked about, like, you know, if going into these events, you know, and you just don't know what to expect, what to prepare for. I mean, it's these events are for everyone and we're the, everyone. We are all there to help you find the way and f- to find your way into the whole bearding community. But uh, Yeah, man, just if you're on the fence and you even thinking about doing it, just do it. If you can go to nationals, if you're too scared to compete, just go watch it. But I highly suggest just doing it. It's it has absolutely changed my life and it's awesome. I, I've met so many cool people, gone to cool places. You, you would have never thought with facial hair, yeah. all the good that can come out of it. Not only are you helping charities, but you're also helping yourself not be an introvert or, you know, figure out how to talk in a microphone or stand on stage like it. It make it brings out the best in you, I think. So just okay. you should you should do it. This is your last chance. We're going to do the drawing here in a, about a minute. So uh, get that hashtag nationals in the chat room. So if you guys, if someone's just tuning in right now at the very end of the show, uh, if you type in hashtag nationals, you will be entered to win this really cool commemorative uh, 2022 uh, national beard and mustache championships presented by honest Amish shirt. It is hot off the presses. Um, it will be available at the event at the Honest Amish table. So if you don't win tonight, that's where you're going to be able to get that shirt. And uh, so, you, we ready? We ready? Are we ready? I've been ready. Here we go. Hopefully, it was me. I hope so. I hope it's you too. Oh Forrest Figgins. Oh, John Abraham. Abraham. <laughs> rigged this is so rigged my oh. gosh well congratulations john abraham you know i i may have your contact information so i will i will reach out to you momentarily and get your shirt size be a size and, extra small yeah absolutely extra small for john abraham but yeah that's it congratulations john abraham you've won an amazing tan honest amish national beard and mustache championship shirt that's it I think we pretty well covered this episode tonight, Scott Score. Is there any beard competitions in Missouri? Uh, there's one in St. Louis in August for sure. Um, yeah, and, check them out. St. Louis well, Beard Mustache Championship. But, club, wait, no. Whatever. Well, yeah, if you if you're interested in uh, yeah, that's it. I was going for it. Yep. Beardcalendar.com. Uh, if you guys are looking for competitions, as we saw a lot of new people in here tonight, uh. Just uh, go to the beardcalendar.com. You're going to find 
tons and tons and tons of events going on all over the country all year long. We do special episodes on Talking Beards where we discuss a lot of these competitions. So make sure you're coming back every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Twitch. Uh, You can find us on all social media, but we want you to go to uh, TalkingBeards.com. There you can watch the show live. You can check out old episodes. You can subscribe to the podcast there. Every week we have a podcast that comes out. It's pretty much the show, but uh, it has a little bit extra things in it, and we put a lot of uh, other content out on uh youtube every week uh where we take parts of the show make them up into smaller little bite-sized videos for you guys so if you don't want don't to see through them. the whole show don't eat them yeah you said they were bite-sized don't eat don't eat the youtubes yeah don't eat the youtubes but yeah so go over to talkingbeards.com that's what we want and we appreciate everyone for uh checking out the show tonight like i said lots of new people tonight we appreciate all yeah, the new cool. people that came in uh, we want to thank MJ for coming in and telling us all about the event this year, the 2022 National Beard Mustache Championships. And I want to thank Aaron. Thanks. Thanks for thanking me. Um, ah. I'm Aaron D. Johnson. Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. But most importantly, everybody go to nationalbeardchampionships.com. Check it out and go. You should just go. Casper, Wyoming coming up. And uh, one last thing. Uh, the Craft Whisker Club has a online competition kind of thing going on as well. Go check them out. I'm sure they're going to be posting all about that coming up. Uh, coming up early December, the, the girls are going to be building mustaches online and, and raising money for wigs for kids. So also a good cause. So go check out the Craft Whisker Club. Yep, they're on Facebook. So just go search for the Craft That's Whisker it. Club on Facebook. That's where you can find them. Everybody have a great night. And uh, yeah, we'll see you next week. See y'all. Okay, bye. Thanks for tuning in to Talking Beards. Make sure you go over to honestamish.com and use promo code TALKINGBEARDS to get 15% off your order. Don't forget to tune in live next Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern at talkingbeards.com.